Hi, my name is Tom Cronin with Emergent Respiratory Products, and I'm here today to talk about the Port Event CPAP system. In your kit, you have your mask, your disposable circuit, and your drive unit. And part of this kit, if you circle the tube into the top of the bag around the mask, you make sure you keep the foam on the mask from being crushed, and it gives you a nice soft seal for the patient. This mask includes a nice half inch to three quarter inch thick foam seal, which is very beneficial because most of your patients on your population base are gonna be hypoxic, a little anxious, and you wanna make sure you have as much of a comfortable seal as possible for them. The mask will be applied higher on the face so that you get a nice good seal right around because you wanna prevent leaks, because realize when you're creating CPAP for the patient, you're increasing pressure within the airway and you wanna make sure that you don't have leaks around the face. These face masks come in three different sizes. The medium, which comes with each circuit, fits about 80 to 90% of your patients. You have a smaller mask here, which works great on elderly patients and also some of your pediatrics. And in addition, you have a large mask here, which will fit folks with an overly large head. And this can also benefit those who are really, really claustrophobic. It's more of a full face mask size. These masks also accommodate the same medical grade standard port, which will fit your BVMs as well too. So if you do need to assist ventilations, you can bag right through the mask with the headgear on. I always recommend when you're letting a patient do CPAP if they can, if they can hold the mask and bring it up and take the first few breaths before you try and come around and actually strap the mask on. It gives them more of a sense of control and it also helps them benefit by uh, preventing them from getting very anxious and trying to pull the mask away. So when you come up, mask, you can come back with the head strap. This is latex-free neoprene and it's very, very soft and comfortable. It's not like the vinyl types that will pull hair and pull skin. It comes right around the back of the base of the skull pulls back, you have multiple holes on the straps here so you can cinch up and down and tighten or loosen the mask as needed. So once the patient's complying on CPAP, then you can come around with the head strap. The unit comes with six foot corrugated tubing and the mask attaches to the front end of the unit. There's only one place it'll attach, so there's no complication. And on the other end of the circuit is an exhalation valve that swivels 360 degrees. What's important about this is when you're putting a patient on CPAP, everything they're breathing out comes out at velocity because it's pressurized. So you want to make sure that with each circuit, and these are included in with the circuits, you use the included HEPA filter, the N95 HEPA filter, right on the exhalation valve. In doing so, if you pick up a patient who's got wet lungs, let's say they have TB, SARS, MRSA, H1N1, or any other disease, they exhale out, cough, sneeze, anything into the system, you're going to make sure it gets filtered out and not spread to your medics. The other end of this circuit also includes a bacterial viral filter. So this protects your equipment from cross-contamination too. So if you find out after the fact that your patient did have something, you know that your equipment's been protected from the system. So once a patient's completely on the system, you have them locked out of the environment. And from a risk management standpoint, this is very important because it prevents your medics from getting sick. The circuit attaches to the unit using a tabbed bayonet adapter. Straight down clockwise turn keeps this locked into place. You don't want this to become disconnected on a door rail, cot guard, anything, because once you've built up pressure, the last thing you want to do is be able to drop that pressure by disconnecting this in the patient's airway. The unit itself has a built-in manometer, so you can see real-time airway pressure for the patient at any time. Included also is a dial here that lets you titrate up and down CPAP pressure for the patient. So you can start them at one or two centimeters of water pressure and slowly build up pressure in their airway. If you get to a point, seven or eight centimeters of water pressure, where it's too much pressure for them, you have the ability to quickly back off the pressure and drop that so that you can get to a point where they were still improving and complying on the system. In addition to that, you also have the ability to run an inline nebulizer in the system. You can take a standard T-piece nebulizer, attach it in between the mask and the circuit, which gives you a very, very effective dry line for your albuterol. This is really effective for patients with COPD and asthma when you need to get that albuterol in and their airway's already closed up. CPAP is a great, great delivery mechanism for that. In addition, you have your filter here, which is also filtering out the excess albuterol from coming off the back when they exhale. If you'd like to do entitled CO2 detection, you can either attach your sensor from your monitor on the exhalation valve here, right in between the HEPA filter and the exhalation valve, or you can also use nasal cannulas right underneath the line in the mask, right at the mouth and nose level as well too. The system is a demand-based CPAP system. 
which only pulls oxygen off your cylinder on inhalation. The drive line is a 50 psi port off of your regulator. And we recommend using the Quick Connect system. You can either have an Omita or a Chemtron. And what this does is give you the ability to quickly connect to your portable. You have your O2 pressure line here. And then when you get into the ambulance, you can disconnect, connect to the wall line in the ambulance, and then back on your portable to get into the ED. If you still have this Quick Connect, you can then Quick Connect onto the wall line in the ED so you have instant access to high pressure oxygen at all times. Because this is running off your high pressure disc port here, this still gives you the ability to run your Christmas tree barb here to run your butyrol nebulizer as well at the same time. As far as O2 consumption, since it's a demand-based system, it gives you the ability to deliver 100% FiO2 to the patient. And on a full D cylinder at 2,000 PSI, you're going to get anywhere from 20 to 35 minutes because it's gated to the respiratory rate and tidal volume of that patient. So always monitor your O2 consumption when you have this on a patient and make sure when you get down to about 4 to 500 PSI, you're looking for a new secondary oxygen source. A couple invisible features about this device. There's a built-in pop-off pressure release system in here. So if the regulator ever failed and it started pushing out 300 PSI into the unit, it's not going to go into the patient's airway. It's going to blow off on the back using a gov built-in governor. This also has built-in anti-asphyxiation as well, too. So if you do run out of oxygen, the patient's not going to asphyxiate on there. One of the other benefits of a demand-based CPAP system is that you can audibly hear the patient's respiratory rate through the system. So if the patient ever does stop breathing, the system's going to stop making noise, and you will understand and know that the patient stopped breathing, and you need to move on to secondary methods.